Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today we get official news on the 6700 non-XT GPU, a new GPU from Nvidia, DRAM prices skyrocketing, official news on AMD's DLSS competitor, and Intel's 12th gen CPUs are unbelievable. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, PowerColor has apparently put out some new press shots of their upcoming RX 6700 non-XT GPU. And in that, they likely by mistake confirmed the amount of VRAM set to come in the new models. As you can see, it specifically states 6 gigabytes, referring to the memory, which we have seen in the past. Of course, I was hopeful that those were wrong, but it doesn't seem to be the case. Obviously, that's a huge drop from the 12 gigabytes of AMD's RX 6700 XT models, but according to Tech Power Up, these are still focused on performance at 1440p. We'll have to see how much they end up costing, but of course, they'll likely be sold out faster than you can click F5 anyway. Of course, with all this new hardware coming out, it can get tough to know what to buy. That's why I offer my PC hardware suggestions at kit.co slash gamermelt. In it, I go over why you may want to buy one thing over another, from GPUs to CPUs and more, as well as provide tips when buying certain components. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll try to reply as soon as I can. Plus, when you make a purchase, it helps the channel out at no additional cost to you. So don't wait and visit kit.co slash gamermeld or click the link in the description below. And speaking of selling out fast, according to a new tweet from resident leaker Copite7Kimmy, it looks like Nvidia is planning to release a new crypto mining GPU based on their A100 accelerator. According to another Twitter post, the card will be called the 220HX and gets a nearly unbelievable hash rate of 210 mega hashes per second. Maybe that will help stave off miners from buying GeForce cards, given it comes in at a whopping $3,000, but who knows. We all know how terribly Nvidia handled the 3060 Ethereum limiter, so I definitely do not have high hopes. Next up for today, according to TrendForce, DRAM in the second quarter of 2021 is expected to get a pretty huge price increase. According to the report, originally from DRAM Exchange, data center clients are expected to purchase large-scale amounts of DRAM, which will force all segments, including the PC segment, to stockpile DRAM. Apparently, Q1 saw an increase of 3-8%, to but Q2 is expected to see a whopping 13-18% to increase in price. Server DRAM pricing is actually expected to rise by as much as 20%, and graphics DRAM is expected to rise by 10-15%. to Basically, DRAM prices are about to get a huge price increase across the board, as if gamers haven't had enough terrible news so far this year. With that said, there is some good news in today's next story. During a recent interview with AMD's GPU chief, Scott Herkelman, PC World asked about their Fidelity FX Super Resolution. For those who don't know, AMD Super Resolution is what the company is calling their equivalent to Nvidia's DLSS technology. Well, in his answer, Scott Herkelman confirmed that they're not only working on the tech, but that they're hoping to launch it this year. What's even better is that while their main focus is bringing the technology to gaming PCs first, they're also working on bringing the tech to other platforms like the new consoles. And the reason that's such a big deal, at least for AMD, is that it will likely make support for their tech pretty widespread, as it means ports will have a much easier time transitioning to AMD GPUs than Nvidia's. Then again, they did mention this being an open source technology, so it will likely be supported on both platforms. Now, one interesting point he made is right here. Well, what I, what I could tell you is that um, you don't need machine learning to do it. Um, you can you can do this many different ways. So yeah, apparently you don't actually need machine learning to make use of the technology. I'm not sure if he's saying that to preclude to their lack of machine learning tech or what, but according to the interview, AMD is simply trying to find the best way that's going to encourage game developers to actually use the technology. And um, really what matters the most to us is what will the game developers uh, want to use. At the end of the day, it is good to hear that AMD is heavily working on it and expected to release this year, though it more sounds like it's probably going to be towards the end of the year, as they definitely have more work left to do. But they do seem determined to ensure the tech is well polished before its release, so that's definitely a good thing. 
And lastly for today, it looks like Intel's upcoming 12th gen CPUs could actually be the giant leap in performance many gamers have been waiting for from Intel, proving once again that the company's 11th gen Rocket Lake is nothing but a stopgap to the real CPUs. The story originally comes from an exclusive leak by Video Cards, who, as many of you know, is a very trustworthy leaker. Either way, in the report, they shared a slide that goes over the upcoming Alder Lake architecture. And remember that Alder Lake is set to be Intel's first jump into hybrid core technology, similar to ARM's big dot little design. Either way, according to this slide, Intel's upcoming 12th gen gets up to a 20% IPC increase in single core performance. And get this, up to a whopping two times, not 20% or anything like that, but double the multi-threaded performance. Now, the obvious question is what that up to part means. As many of you know, IPC increase is a per application increase, and up to means the best case scenario. I'd really love to see the average in the end, but regardless, double the performance in anything is a big deal. And if this is compared to Tiger Lake and not Rocket Lake, it's even a bigger deal. Remember that Intel's Alder Lake comes with the new Golden Cove Core and an enhanced 10 nanometer super fin design. Not only that, but it also comes with support for DDR5 and PCI Express Gen 5. And the reason they mentioned DDR5 or 4 is according to video cards so motherboard makers can choose for higher end motherboards. At the end of the day, Intel's 12th gen looks to be a huge jump in performance, though as always, I suggest waiting for third party reviews. So while that does it for today, are you excited for Intel's upcoming 12th gen CPUs or are you still having a hard time finding a GPU? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.